There has been controversy for as long as I've been woodworking in regards to how fast your drill bit must spin in order for you to make clean holes. Today, let's look at this age old mystery and see if there's any truth to it. If we open the belt guard, you can see a number of pulleys up here. In my drill press, I have three different pulley spindles. There's the motor, idler, and spindle pulley. Using two different belts, I'm able to adjust my drill press from anywhere between 300 and 3100 RPM. Of course, you might open yours up and find out that this is not your setup, which is okay because the method of speeding up a drill bit isn't on trial here, just the speed. There are countless charts out there that show exactly how fast a drill bit needs to go. I printed the top 10 results I got on Google. But basically there are two different deciding factors, the diameter of the drill bit and the type of material used. If you're using an eighth inch drill bit, you'll want it to go faster than a three quarter inch drill bit as the speed of the cutting edge becomes faster as you travel away from the center. Because smaller drill bits spin slower than larger bits, the theory is that we need to speed up these drill bits to compete with the larger diameter drill bits. I made a chart of the top six best results that I found, averaging their suggested speeds, and then rounding them to the nearest speed that my drill press will do. If we look at it, for the most part, the numbers are pretty consistent. The consensus appears to be what I mentioned earlier. The smaller the drill bit, the higher the RPM needed to cut with it. The larger the bit, the slower the drill press should spin. Wood type matters as softer, lesser density woods shear differently than harder, more dense woods. Generally speaking, the denser the wood, the cleaner the cut. Less dense woods, on the other hand, have a tendency to tear as it cuts. For example, if I cut two pieces of wood here, jatoba being my denser wood and aspen being my least dense wood, we can see under a microscope that jatoba has a nice clean cut, while aspen leaves behind fibers, which are similar to burrs that are produced when you cut metal. If we look at the wood type on my chart, you'll see that these six different websites also change their speeds due to either cutting maple, which is a dense wood, or pine, which is a less dense wood. Now, I did say that there were two deciding factors, but I do need to mention blade sharpness. If we go back to our drill bit diagram, you'll notice that there's two blades right here. On every drill bit, just like the teeth on saw blades, we have blades that will react differently depending on how sharp they are. Because I don't wanna leave that factor out, I'll only be using brand new bits. While I have my own opinion on speeds needed for drilling, based on the years that I've used a drill press, I'm not gonna reveal that to the very end. But I thought it would be interesting to drill using each of the bits as suggested by the compiled websites I found, and then setting my drill press to its top speed as well as its lowest speed and drilling again. Then we'll take a close look and see what we find. To get started, I cut two pieces of wood, a piece of hard maple and a piece of pine, both of which are about 7 eighths of an inch thick. Then I added plots for each of the bits I intend to use color coding each section. The green is the compiled recommended speed averages from six websites. The red is the maximum speed of my drill press, which is 3100 RPM. And the blue is the slowest speed, which is 300 RPM. Because every hole drilled in wood should start with an awl, I used my awl and marked each location. Now, I won't put you through me changing this for every speed, but I wanted to show you how cumbersome it is to change these belts. I'm also gonna save us some time by speeding through all the drilling. This is the fastest my drill press will go. And now the slowest my drill press can go. Full disclosure here, I didn't have my chuck tightened right with this hole that I made with a spade bit and the high speed caused it to become unstable. Because of this, I'll quickly drill the hole again. Well, as you can see, all the holes are drilled. So no matter how fast my drill press spins, they all drill. Of course, the idea is that the optimum speeds make cleaner holes. In the course of drilling these, I tried my best not to contaminate any of the edges of the holes by touching them. So we'll see what the difference made within the holes as well as the outside of the holes with a microscope. We'll go ahead and start with our first piece, which is pine. We're gonna go up to the eighth inch. This is the optimal speed. And it actually looks very clean. I don't see much on the outside as far as any kind of furries. We'll go to the faster one, which is 3100 RPM. 
and it's much uglier than the last one. We'll go to the blue, which is the 300 RPM. And again, it is a little bit messy. We'll move up to the 3 8 If we look at the first hole, there are fuzzies on the outside. This is the optimal. The inside of the hole looks fine otherwise. The red actually looks a little bit better. That's the 3100. We'll go to the slowest one, and that looks pretty good too. There's a little bit of fuzzies on the outside. Now we'll jump up to the spade bit, which is the one inch. The optimal speed, if we look at it, the hole looks good. There's a little bit of tearing in the inside. And there's a little bit of fuzzies on the outside, but that's pretty common with spade bits. They are a little bit more messy. We'll move down to the 3100 RPM. And that one looks about the same to me. There's maybe a little bit more furries on the sides. We'll go to the slowest one, which is 300 RPM. And I do see a little bit more tearing in the inside. A little bit of fuzzy on the outside. If I do move the block around, to the optimal speed, I can see that there's a little bit more tearing on one side, so it's not perfect by any means. Now we'll look at the one and five eighths, and at the optimal speed, I see a little bit of tearing, but it looks pretty clean. We'll go to the 3100 RPM, and that looks even better. That really looks good. Now we'll switch to the slowest one, which is pretty close to the optimal one. And once again, that looks pretty sharp. Now we'll switch to the maple block. We'll start off at an eighth of an inch and we'll look at the optimal speed. And there's a little bit of tearing. The hole looks fine, but there are some fuzzies on the top. Higher speed, 3100 RPM. And that one's got a little bit of tearing, it looks like, again. And then we'll go down to the slowest, which is 300 RPM. And once again, that has some tearing on it. We'll move up to 3 8 inches and we'll look at the optimal speed. Once again, there's some tearing, some fuzzies on the top. The hole doesn't look that clean. It looks like it's kind of rough. We'll go down to this, the faster one, 3100 RPM. That one actually looks a little bit better. Little tiny bit of fuzzies on the top. If we go to the slowest speed, there is a little bit of fuzzies that have uh, accumulated on the top but it's pretty similar to the optimal one. Maybe a little worse. Now we'll move to the one inch, the optimal speed, and there is a little bit of a fuzzy ring around the top. Again, that's kind of the nature of spade bits. We'll move to the higher speed, which is 3100 RPM. And that one looks really good and clean. That one looks a little bit better, I think. And we'll go down to the slowest one, which is 300 RPM. And that looks, again, pretty much like the other ones. Now we'll go to the final hole, which is the one and five eighths inch, and we'll look at the optimal. And that looks pretty clean. We'll go to the faster speed, and that looks better. <laughs> looks a little bit better. And then the slowest speed is gonna be the same as the optimal speed, 300 RPM. And once again, it looks the same as the other two except maybe the 3100 RPM looks a little cleaner. So what does all this mean? From the evidence that I have seen, there's very little difference between speeds. In fact, I tested some of the holes that did really well the first time and found that that wasn't always repeatable. There is a lot of evidence that a faster bit creates more heat and can cause burning, which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. For that reason, I encourage you to turn your drill press down to the, its lowest speeds when you drill into wood. This does a number of things. First, it helps to lower the wear and tear on the metal by decreasing the heat. With larger bits, I find that it kicks up less sawdust and particulates. Even with the optimal speeds recommended, I found I was copying more than I have in the past. I find with lower speeds that I never burn any of my wood. With slower speeds, I also have been impressed by how much easier it is to control the wood I'm working with. Higher speeds also seem to cause sawdust to compact more inside of the bits due to the heat, and I find that I have to clean them out more often. And they're generally more difficult to get the sawdust out of. I'm not saying that it doesn't compact in the bit with slower speeds. It just seems to do so a little less, as well as being easier to clean out. And finally, due to heat expansion, hotter bits create bigger holes. To illustrate this, I lowered the temperature of a Forstner bit and drilled six holes. 
By the last hole, there's a slight difference in hole size over the first one. If you're really looking to get nice clean holes on the face of your wood, I recommend getting a deburring bit. These little guys will clean up any ugly hole with just a couple turns. But my best recommendation, I like to drill like I like to smoke my meats, low and slow. Drilling a hole shouldn't be done as quickly as you can. I'm gonna prove how effective this is by pulling out one of my drill bits that I've had for about 15 years. This bit has definitely seen better days, but as you can see, it's covered in dirt and rust. We'll chuck it up and see how it does with both woods. This is the original hole that I drilled out. You can see it's got fuzzies on it. I'm gonna drill right next to it. This is hard maple, and this is at the lowest speed that my drill press will go. If I blow that off, you can see how nice and clean that is. Now we'll do the same thing with pine. Again, that's the original hole, which was very clean. And if you look again, it's absolutely perfect. Again, this is the slowest speed on my drill press. Uh, normally it wants me to go 800 RPM faster, but you can see it doesn't really matter as long as you take your time. I'd like to thank my Patreons that help keep this channel running. Michelle B, Keith Current, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, and Zach Finch. If you'd like to get early access, see how some of my secret projects are coming along and get a free all, Join my Patreon today, and remember to keep making things.